Hey, what's going on guys? Doom here. And uh, today I'm bringing you my second tutorial and uh, the second part of my how to make a montage series. Um, I had a few requests from the last one and uh, just some advice and I got a lot of good feedback and everything like that. And like I said, that was my first time ever doing a tutorial and I'm not really used to doing this type of stuff. So it'll get better as I go along, you know. Uh, it's all trial and error, like I said. So uh, one thing that somebody asked me about was to uh, to show what we're going to be working on before um, I actually get into it, so they you know they know if it's something they want to watch or not. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then there's a few other things that I'll make sure and do as we go along here. Um, I'm hopefully going to try to make these a little shorter, but I feel like they're, it's okay if they're longer as long as I'm in depth and I really uh, teach you guys something, you know. So that's what I'm going for. Uh, I'm using a mouse today without a mouse pad, so if you hear me like moving it around or anything, I'm sorry. Um, so a couple days ago, we uh, we just did some motion tracking and basically just ended up looking like this. It was just a really slow cinematic with some text. We did some masking on this to make it look like it was actually the text was actually there, and uh, that's pretty much it. And I kind of wanted to go more in depth, but it was already getting kind of long as it was. So I just ended it there and decided to do a second part. So it's not really going to be talking about motion tracking again today. We're going to basically make the motion tracking that we did look like this. So you notice we have uh, some nice realistic camera shake. We had a little black fade on the black bars, everything like that, making it look more cinematic and a little more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, that was my phone. Sorry about that. Um, I don't, uh, I don't want to go too in-depth or, like, do, uh, color correction or anything like that. Um, so we're just going to kind of stick to this today and try to make this not as long. So let's get right in here. Uh, this is what we did a couple days ago. It's just the cinematic and everything like that. And one thing I didn't really talk about is, um, using the built-in camera tracker, 3D camera tracker that we used, um, you can actually, I know a lot of people who use uh, the Foundry camera tracker, uh, this one right here. Uh, when you use that and it's analyzing the clip and everything like that and it's tracking the features, you actually can't, like say I was tracking it, I couldn't go into Chrome and watch like YouTube videos because for some reason it, it stops it. I don't know why it does that. It's really fucking annoying. And uh, sometimes tracking can take a really long time so you end up just sitting here in After Effects for like a half hour while it tracks features. But the great thing about the built-in tracker is that you actually can, uh, you know, close out of this window or you can just let it go in the background while you surf the web or you talk to people on Skype or whatever it may be. So that's one really good thing about the camera tracker, the built-in in CS6. And uh, another thing that I really like um, about this camera tracker is how simple it is to use and how um, it, it really doesn't make your your comp lag at all. I know mine's going to be kind of laggy because my cinematic's so long, but uh, as you can see, I'm able to kind of just scroll right through it without having any problems. Sometimes when you use the uh, the Foundry's camera tracker, uh, it can make your comp a little laggy, and that kind of depends on your comp specs, obviously. But um, uh, the other thing I needed to talk about that I didn't yesterday is when using the built-in tracker, um, what you're going to want to do is just import your footage, put it in here, you know, trim it to whatever you want, and then put the camera tracker right on it. Don't scale it up because I know on HTVBRs you have this little black line over here. You're not going to want to scale it up or do anything like that to it yet. You're just going to want to go ahead and track the features right away. You can run into some errors if you do mess around with it at all. Uh, so just import your footage, trim it, go ahead and track it, and uh, you can do all the other stuff later like scaling it up. So after you tracked it, you got your text in and everything like that and you're ready to go. All you're gonna do is you're just gonna highlight all these, so you can just you can just click one, hold shift, click the top one, and um, sorry my fans started going crazy, but uh, make sure they're all selected, and then you just go ahead and right click and pre-compose this. I'm not gonna name it or anything, but uh, that's just for tutorial sake. One thing I would say is when you're editing, to make sure and try to keep everything as organized as possible, um, like naming everything and stuff like that. Uh, it really does help in the long run. Um, so that's just a little advice. So we're just going to go ahead and pre-compose this. And we'll wait for that to go. It might take a second. 
because of the tracking. Okay, there we go. So now we have our pre-comp here. I'm just going to cut this or trim this right here. Um, the uh, the shortcut keys that I'm using should be at the bottom of the screen. So I'm not really going to tell you guys what it is or what the shortcut key is. You should be able to see it on my screen anyways. Um, so yeah, this is our cinematic right here. And I guess let's just get right into this. So the first thing I would do is uh, scale this up. Uh, you can scale it up to just 101 if you want. And that gets rid of the uh, black bar. But because of what I'm going to be doing to it, I'm going to scale it up to 105 just to give myself a little room to work with. And that kind of depends. Uh, you don't have to go that far up. It just depends on depends on what you're going to do to it. Um, so we have it scaled up. And then um, I'm going to add some Twixter to it to just speed it up. Because it like I said, it was a really slow cinematic. But the reason I did that is because then you're... Yeah, your track points are really, uh, really steady and stable throughout the entire thing, and it makes a really nice, smooth text. You don't have to worry about your text jumping around at all. It's one really big pet peeve of mine when watching edits is when the text jumps around a lot. Uh, I'm not gonna do like um, a really in-depth Twixter tutorial right now, but I am gonna do one in the future to tell you guys how I use Twixter and how uh, I use it on clips to make it really smooth and everything like that and how to make sure you don't get ghosting or anything like that. And I might actually do that pretty soon because we're going to be using Twixer a lot when I get into syncing and stuff like that. But for now, uh, I'm just going to use it real quick. So you just put Twixer on this, um, put it to the frame rate of whatever your clip is. Mine is 59.94. Uh, I change this. Like I said, I'm not going to do in-depth stuff right now. If you want to follow along, go for it. But uh, I'll talk more about this stuff later. And then uh, when you have that, you can just go ahead and keyframe the speed right here at 100. And if you want, you can hit U on your keyboard, and it brings up all the keyframes, which is only one right now. Uh, and then I'm just going to go one frame ahead. And I believe on the cinematic I just did, I did 300. So we'll go ahead and do that again. So now it's going to be a lot faster. It's going to be three times faster. So I'm just going to go and put this at about... For some reason that didn't... Oh, my bad. Let's zoom in here. I changed the frame rate. That's my fault. Go ahead and put that back. Alright, so you have your keyframe here at 100, and you go one frame ahead, and you keyframe it to 300. There we go. Now we have a fast cinematic. My fault, guys. There we go. So I'm just going to go 10 seconds in. I'll just put that there. And then, uh, so now I have this fast cinematic, everything looks good. Um, as far as camera shake goes, uh, I don't know, I know other people, I know some people use different things, but what I use is uh, I use um, just the wiggle and animation. So uh, if you need to, you can go into apply animation presets and you can go ahead and find those right here, and uh, <clears throat> it'll be in. Uh, It'll be in behavior, and you'll see all these wiggles. So I use position and rotation. Um, I think I think there's yeah there's some other ones that kind of do other things, but I don't really mess around with those too much. Uh, so I go ahead and just put position on this first, and you'll notice it's jumping all over the place. Um, so what I do is I change the amount from anywhere, kind of depending on how fast or slow your cinematic is, will depend on the amount. I usually put it anywhere from 5 to 7, so I'm just going to put it on 6. And as far as the speed goes, I go anywhere from 1 to 2. So sometimes it's 1.5, sometimes it's 2, and so on. Uh, I'm just going to put this at 1.5. So now you're just going to have a little bit of jumpiness, makes it look kind of realistic. And then I'm also going to add a wiggle rotation, and this is going to do a ton. As you'll see, it's going crazy. Uh, so go ahead and change the wiggle amount on this one to 0 0.2 or whatever your personal preference is. You might want it less than that. You might want it more. You might not want it at all. So that just kind of depends. You can play around with the numbers and see uh, or get something that you really like. And on this, I never change the speed. I always leave it at 1. But once again, you can mess around with that as well. It's all personal preference. So okay, go ahead and minimize all those. So when I have our cinematic, it's... Uh, you know, it's got a little bit of realistic uh, camera movement to it. And I'm also going to go in uh, on this, and I'm going to hit R on my keyboard for rotation. And I'm going to put this up. Now, this kind of depends. Um, 
I guess I'll leave this at zero for a second. Um, in my case, uh, we're starting behind this door and we're circling it around it to the left. So in my opinion, uh, I would change it to plus so it's tilted down that way. And then as you come around this corner, the camera should be kind of curving this way, you know, kind of curves with the, uh, the same curve as your cinematic. So in my case, I'm going to put this at five. I'm going to keyframe that. I'm going to go to the end, and I'm just going to go to minus 5. So now you got this cinematic that really kind of curves around the doorway. It gives it a really nice feel. But you'll notice we have these little black edges here because the uh, the clip is turning out. But that's uh, the black bars will cover that up. So I'll go ahead and cover that now, uh, how I make black bars. Um, some people do it differently than me. This is my own little thing that I created myself. I don't know if it's the best way or not. I'm not really going to speculate on that. I know there's plenty of other ways, but uh, this is just how I do it. So basically, I just go to Layer, New, Solid, and make sure it's your comp size. Make sure it's black. Hit OK. And that's going to cover up your entire composition. So what you're going to want to do is go in here. Oh, my bad. Uh, you're gonna after you have that. Sorry, after you have that, you're gonna go layer, mask, new mask. Okay, now you have a mask around it. Um, you can go in here, and you can go to mask, and you can adjust it. Or uh, the shortcut is just M on your keyboard, so you can press M, and it brings up the mask. Uh, once you have your mask right here, you can go ahead and invert it. My comms are running a little, a little slow right now. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, so now it, you don't see it at all, and that's because now it's on the outside of this mask. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down here into your mask settings, and you're going to go to the expansion, and you're going to play with this. Uh, you're going to notice a black border around it. Now, uh, for my edits, I usually go anywhere from minus 60 to minus 80. Now this all depends, though. Some people like it really small. Some people like it really big. Um, that's just all personal preference. I prefer it right around minus 80. And then uh, you'll notice we have a black border around it. <clears throat> Obviously, we don't want these on the side. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that this is highlighted right here. And you'll go into your mask, and you can just double-click any one of these points. And then it'll bring up these little transform boxes things. Um, basically, you just go to these sides, and you just drag them off. Something like that doesn't really matter and then you just have your black bars and the one thing I really like about this and the reason that I use it so much is because you can keyframe this expansion so if you wanted it to like come in like this for some reason you can have it do that and it's really simple and you don't really have to worry about it and it just looks nice in my opinion uh, if that's something you want to do so that's why I do it this way I just feel like it's uh, a little easier for people uh, so I'm gonna leave that on I'm gonna minimize that and then I had the black fade on, and you might think that's the simplest thing in the world, which it kind of is, because you could just go in and keyframe this opacity on on this clip. But the problem I have with keyframing this opacity is um, usually there's going to be color correction on this clip, and it's going to be on adjustment layers, and we'll go more into depth on that eventually as well. I know a lot of people want to see my color correction tutorials, but um, usually there's going to be color correction above this, okay? So I don't actually, when I do fade to blacks or fade from blacks, I don't keyframe this opacity. What I actually do is I do layer new solid. I make a new solid, comp size, obviously. And you're going to cover the screen. And then um, you're going to go ahead and go into the opacity, which is T on your keyboard. And you're just going to keyframe that from 100. I think I did mine for like three seconds on that. And you're just going to put it at zero. So that will go on top of your clip and all your color corrections, and I just feel like it looks better, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you'll see that you get this nice fade in. You have uh, the nice camera shake and the rotation everything like that. It really brings some life into the cinematic, makes it look a lot better. Um, when we get uh, some color correction on this and everything like that, it'll definitely look a lot better. And... Uh, um, one last thing before I go is a lot of people with this built-in uh, camera tracker, uh, a lot of people might not know how to 
track logos and stuff like that in, or 3D text. Um, if you guys want me to show you how to do like logos, 3D text, stuff like that, I'll be more than happy to. So let me know if you want to see that. Uh, I do plan on adding a logo uh, tracked over here actually uh, on the cinematic. So if you guys want to see that, I can easily do that. I plan on doing it anyways. But uh, for now, I think that's pretty much it. And this will wrap up my part two of motion tracking. So um, until next time, guys, I'm out. Peace.